joint team getting fit, team get super fit call for March 2nd. Um, today I'm going to talk about um, branding, social media success. Um, this is from the practical social media university that I'm going through, which I probably should have done years ago. Um, next week we're going to be covering um, your niche. So that's kind of the second part of this, but it's really a lot of information to put just in one call. So let's see if I can get this to work. So basically branding, what is branding? I mean, exactly who is the perfect prospect for your business and what they need. Um, being able to write content that adds value instead of just writing blog posts that do nothing, writing stuff that adds value and creates engagement and levels that you have never previously attained. Helps you create low cost ads that generate a stream of never ending leads. Um, they were talking about a $1 a day like ad that was generating 40 to 50 likes a day, which is like four cents a like, which is even, I get about seven to eight cents a like, but I thought four cents was kind of crazy. It helps you convert more leads than you ever thought possible. So converting leads into actual sales by targeting your brand and your niche. Branding is starting out without a brand for your business would be like trying to write a book without an idea of what your story is about. Your brand is the most overlooked secret weapon in your business. Um, I personally have never developed a brand. I just kind of thought my niche was moms, which is obviously way too broad. Um, developing a brand for almost six years probably is not the best idea. So why is branding so important? Um, your goal is to do something different and relative to your niche. So, I mean, I'm bouncing off different ideas. It was um, moms with multiple kids. That was one. Another one is um, moms who have lost a child. I'm still not sure if that's too specific, but I'm kind of still trying to figure it out. And then you will... Not get good results from your Facebook ads if you're not branding and targeting your niche correctly. Um, you're wasting your marketing dollars by not having a brand. Basically, they said if you're spending money to advertise a market without being connected to a brand, you might as well pile up your money and burn it. So if you're not targeting the right people, you're really wasting all the money you spend on, on the ads you're doing, which I know I've wasted a lot of money by crappy <laughs> targeting. So your brand is your foundation of your business. So basically, these, this is why people need a brand. If they have competition, which we obviously have competition, if you have to persuade people to buy, I mean, I don't really consider it persuading people to buy, I consider it sharing and um, getting them to buy because they trust you. Um, you have to attract partners, distributors, coaches, whatever you want to call it. You want more leads, you want lower ad costs, and you want more sales. Those are reasons to have a brand. And you are your brand. So your brand is not Beachbody. Um, the product supports you. It's not your brand. So people follow you, not Beachbody, because, oh, well, there's whatever, 400 some thousand Beachbody coaches. So you have to make yourself stick out from all the other 449,000 coaches or whatever there is. And you have to help people satisfy their emotional unmet needs. We always talk about emotional whys. This is basically you already know what their emotional unmet need are if they're in your niche because you have the same emotional unmet need as them. And the value of the brand. Do you mind if I um, Go ahead. add something to that? Yeah. Um, so I'm reading this book or listening to this book called Pitch Anything. It's on Audible. It was recommended by Ray Higdon. And what he says in there is that like when people give you price objections, take the conversation back to how it's about the relationship between you and that prospect and how you're going to help them over a long period of time. And so it, go, it ties in with what you're saying about we're not pitching products. You know, um, it's not about the products. It's about you, what you have to offer 
mm-hmm. as a person to help that individual. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like I totally screwed that up last week when, when I did that call with that person and she was asking me all these questions and I really should have taken the focus about back and, and taken a step back and said, hey, you know, listen, let me take a step back and, and just let you know that you know, I know you have a lot of questions about the products, but I just want to let you know that my goal is to help you mm-hmm. achieve your goal and, and achieve permanent results over an extended period of time. The details we can figure out and if, you know, we can always correct course as we need to. So just wanted to add that in. Yeah, I mean, I've messed it up a lot too. People like last second of the month and people are like, oh, how much does it cost on like Monday at like 8 p.m.? And then I just, I still just give them the price and I'm, not thinking, well, maybe I don't need the sale today. Maybe I should really work on getting them for another time, not just focusing on, oh, I need to, I need to sell today, today. And then I made that mistake. Today. I don't know how I had success club, but. <laughs> I think it's easy to get lazy sometimes, or, you know, like a lot of times we're talking to people late at night and we're tired and stuff like that too. And it's just like, you get a little, you're not really on top of your game. And so it's, it's tough. It's a challenge, but you know, ideally you really want to, you know, focus on that relationship that you're building, which is part of your brand that you, the way that you attract probably attracted that person in the first place. Yeah. And I, I think I'm going to go back to those people who gave me crickets after that and try to go back and, and have the conversation. That's what I'm going to do this week, what I've been doing. And it, people have been coming back when I talked to them about what they need and what they want. People have been actual responding and not crickets. So, I mean, even make mistakes five and a half years in. Trust me, I make mistakes every day. So basically, you need to believe in your own brand. Um, your brand is not the corporate brand. So it's not Beachbody. Trust and credibility in you will get you the sale. So they have to trust you and believe you that they're going to buy. Uh, the number one goal of your brand is to service the needs of others. And you need to craft a total solution for your niche, which is what I'm going to cover next week. I said, it's just way too much. This is probably even too much for one night, but yeah. And then what is a brand? So this is definition taken exactly. Brand is a mental mosaic of rational and emotional experiences that live in the customer's mind. Branding is an ongoing process of understanding and cultivating the customer's perception, (laughs) perceptions, expectations, and experiences in a manner that creates added value and preference, creates relationships that build credibility, um, helps you understand the unmet emotional need of your target market, creates the right set of experiences, focuses on emotional experiences, um, satisfies unmet needs and desires, exchanging of value, and that you are the solution, not the product. So emotional brand intelligence, that brands live in the minds of others. You don't own your brand. Um, 90% of our purchasing decisions occur in the subconscious. So 95% of the things we buy, we don't even really think about buying. Something that is going to meet our needs and we just are going to buy it. And people aren't going to have to convince us. So emotional reasons are drivers for why one brand is chosen over another. So why you would choose I'd say Target over Kmart. Um, It's all about their marketing and who they market towards. People don't buy for logistic reasons. They buy for emotional reasons. That's a Zig Ziglar quote. And they're basically saying that one to two good posts a day that targets your niche help build your business. I know Bonnie Engel does that. She doesn't do a whole lot of posts, but she's targeting her niche with every post. And what kind of content and offers you have will get people in your niche to sign up. So if you're, just an example, if you want to focus on moms, you wouldn't really have an offer for going to a bar or something like that. I mean, as a mom, that's not really something I would really care about. So when you're in competition, which unfortunately you're in competition, You have to choose new ways to compete in the same space. You have to do something new and different to appeal to um, your niche, to cater your brand to your niche. And unless you can be everything to everybody, concentrated on doing your best to the few somebodies. So instead of trying to sell to everybody on Facebook, concentrate on the people that will trust you, that 
will believe in you that will want to buy from you without you having to sell them. So here it said you need to have a narrow target market. That's why I kind of think um, moms with multiple kids might be too broad. So you cannot appeal to everyone. Um, if you don't narrow the target market, you'll have generic offerings that everybody has, um, which means you're competing against those people that have the same offerings as you. More cost and time put into your business that doesn't have a return. You putting in more work than you need to. Um, less results and a lot more frustration. So then they talk about gen demographics, like gender, race, age, income, education. Said you should not determine your target market based off demographics. You should base it on their emotional unmet need. And then selecting your target market, avoid broad demographic targeting. All your prospects, no matter how dispersed or finite demographically, all bought from you. Why? You don't want to worry about limiting yourself as you narrow down your niche. And target market niches are not limiting, but liberating. Because if you're talking to all the people that are in your niche, it's going to be easier for you to talk to them. It's going to be easier to have a real conversation with them. Um, instead of just talking about fitness programs, you'll be able to talk to them, get to know them have a real actual personal connection with somebody instead of just thinking about success club points, which is my mistake. And I made that mistake before near the end of the month. You think I need this many success club points instead of thinking about, I need to find quality people that are like me that I'm going to connect with and that are actually going to follow through and not just go away and cancel their Shakeology two weeks in and really no point in that. So importance, important starting point in building your brand and niche. You are in the middle of the niche itself. So since your niche is also you, you have built-in credibility. Um, you'll get more content engagement, less cost for ad. As I was saying, this $1 per day like ad for this person was getting 40 to 50 likes per day, which is four cents. Um, well-targeted niche, creating a brand for your niche with people coming to you and quality content leads to engage with instead of, instead of, I don't even know what I want to say. Quality instead of, I don't know. Can I ask a question? Yeah. <laughs> Did she talk about what her niche was? Like, I mean, that's pretty remarkable. Four cents per like. This particular one was, um, I'm trying to think of who it was that it was. It was, um, oh, the fit teacher. That's what it was. This guy who's a yeah. teacher and he was going towards teachers. So that's basically what, what his niche was. Wow. That's and awesome. There was another one that was fit military guy and he had all like the branches of the military and he was getting kind of likes <coughs> by targeting these people. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Selecting your brand and niche. So when you select the niche for your brand, think through your own passions, interests, life stages, family makeup, life problems that you've overcome. So if you overcome an eating disorder, if um, you've over become a death, um, kids that have um, disabilities or illnesses, things like that. You should really think about those things or things you're passionate about. Um, they've used examples like people that are horse lovers, people that love the beach, just things like that, things that you really love and that you really want to connect with people that have the same Ooh. likes and loves as you. So for target marketing, well-defined target market is the first element to a marketing strategy. Um, you got to think about what your business promise what your business will do for your own niche. So this is the brand strategy platform. I'm going to show an example of one um, in the next slide. And I'll post these um, slides in the group as well. But this is basically how you develop your brand strategy. I'm, this is I'm getting the call. I'm still working on mine. So basically it's for... Mm -hmm. So it's for your target market niche that meets an un 
met emotional need, then your business name promises to whatever your promise is by offering whatever your point of difference is backed by the reason to believe to address the need for the market opportunity. And since we understand the emotional brand intelligence, so looking at it, it makes it make much more sense. So this is the one that they had. For moms with autistic children that just want the world to accept their child the way that you want us to accept yours. So this was a mom with autistic children. And that feels as though we have no choice but to be brave, yet are terrified at the same time, all while having no time for ourselves. So Jenny Stewart Fitness promises to help you stay brave from the inside out by offering my one-on-one -on -one support plus a community of other moms just like you to maintain your strength on your own time from the comfort of your own home. Backed by years of experience with my own autistic child, tons of research, countless experts, and supports from other autistic moms along the journey to a happier and healthier me to address the need for autism moms to know that they don't need to feel as though they have to do it themselves. Since we understand that it can take superhuman strength to deal with an autistic child, an outside world that simply doesn't get how smart, loving, and wonderful your child truly is. So this is a very specific brand strategy platform. So you would basically just plug in your own information in there. I have mine kind of written out, but I, I'm not sure. I'm probably going to change it. So basically, you should use your brand strategy platform in the About Me section of your blog or fitness page. Um, basically, make it into a paragraph and add an additional paragraph that personally about you. I thought this was actually a really good um, suggestion because it really shows what kind of people you want to help and what you're going to offer them. So I thought that was pretty great. Yeah, it's hard to come up with, you know, exactly how that should look sometimes. And, uh, you know, I don't know whether that's the perfect way to do it, but, it, you know, it sounds probably better than what any of us can come up with. Yeah, it's a good, I felt it was a good start, at least to have something instead of just <laughs> spewing off nothingness. I don't know. I, I never really put in an about me section what I'm going to give to somebody who signs up with me. I don't really write anything about my team like that. I just really write about myself, not include any of that kind of stuff. So it was really kind of eye-opening for me. So target market niche can represent great volume potential online with relatively less competition, greater appeal, and increased conversations. So a great target market niche is based on emotional, it's supposed to be unmet needs. So things like their self-esteem, as the example said, no choice but to be brave yet are terrified at the same time. Um, going towards people's feeling of love and belonging, a community of other moms just like you. So if you're saying, you know, you're going to be in a group with other moms that are like you, I mean, that appeals to somebody who's having a tough time or somebody that really is looking for that kind of support. I mean, my groups besides Stuart just tend to be moms. And that's kind of how it's kind of my, my market, but I think I need to tighten it up a little bit. And then things to think about when you're thinking about your brand, what do you do for your customers that can't do for themselves? What emotional unmet need, want, or desire are you helping address? What is the emotional benefit of being a customer of your business? And how would it impact your customer if your business was no longer around? So if you disappeared, how would it impact your customers? And there are four levels of this brand communication they were talking about. So you're going to have your brand promise, which is um, what you're going to do for them. The reasons to believe. So how they would believe in you, how they would find you credible, how they would connect with you, and then a full suite of offerings. So everything you have to offer, challenge groups, um, coaching, training, um, if you have some kind of um, clean eating group, that, all those kind of things, well, everything that you offer personally. And then purchase accelerators, which is special offers, discounts, incentives. Um, so if you're going to do like a, a group, like a clean eating group, something like that, it would be something free that they can do that would get them involved with you before they actually buy something. 
And then our discounts, like the challenge packs that are on sale every month, things like that. And then a huge thing is that people don't buy products. They buy solutions and experiences. So Beachbody gives a solution. So they're not buying the product. They're buying the whole package, the program, the nutrition, the challenge group, the accountability, the support. They're buying the whole experience. They're not just buying it and they're just going to do it on their own. Because if they do that, it's just going to sit there and they're not going to get the results and they're just going to quit. So they want to buy solutions and experiences for their unmet emotional wants, needs, or desires from credible source that they can trust. So you want to be credible. You want to um, show that you're doing the workout, show that you kind of have idea what you're talking about. Make it so that they can trust you. Those are all things that you can do with your niche because you are like them. So you know what would appeal to you, so you can kind of decide what would appeal to them. So as I said, products and services are the means, brands are the solution. Um, you can convey your brand through lots of different ways, eBooks, YouTube videos, um, sharing on social media. They mentioned Yelp, which I've never even thought of doing that, but putting your business on Yelp. Because a lot of people go on there. I've never personally gone on there, but other people do. One of the ways that we can uh, have credibility is by sharing the results that we've helped others get. Mm -hmm. So nowadays, anytime I get any sort of result from anyone, it's going on my page, you know, in one form or another. <clears throat> and uh, Maybell, I saw you did a good job uh, posting Becky's results today. So um, yeah. great job. And, you know, we just need to keep doing that. I see uh, Amy Silverman does that all the time. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm wondering though, um, I always feel very leery of sharing things um, from a private group onto a public forum um, because obviously there's a reason why that person's in a private group because they don't want to share that stuff um, in public. So I always, you know, um, ask first before sharing. Just yeah. see. I already have a challenger I know personally who is like, I don't want my, you know, she'll, she'll send me her before and afters, but she's like, I I do not want it out on Facebook. So yeah, that's a good idea to ask. Yeah. Cause if you, if you do it and you don't ask, you're going to break that trust. Right. So basically without a brand, you lose power. Um, how you provide a total solution is equally, if not more important than the product or service itself. So what you're offering, your accountability, um, however they want you to keep them accountable, if they want you to message them, if they just want it in the group, whatever they want. But I mean, it's a total solution. So a product and service can be copied, but a brand cannot. Nobody can really copy your brand if you um, make it specifically you. No one's going to be able to copy that. No, I actually did pretty good. 30 minutes. <laughs> Do you have any questions or comments? This was a really awesome call. I mean, um, you know, I was kind of expecting a lot of the stuff that I've already learned, uh, like about um, your, you know, coming up with your avatar and that sort of stuff. And this was more of the deep dive into how to relate to your target market. Mm -hmm. And I think the key point is that, um, appealing to their unmet emotional need, you know, and I love those templates too that you, that you provided. So awesome call. I'm going to take those templates and, and work on those a little bit. And then also think more about the, that unmet emotional need, you know, as I'm doing my posting and talking to people. Right. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, I think this kind of ties in with that pitch anything as well. Um, I'm going to do our team call after the cruise, and um, I don't know how far I am through the book right now, but I might do, you know, like a summary of that. So yeah. stay tuned. I'm really impressed so far, and I think I think there could be something to that. Absolutely. Anybody else? Thank you.